They become stars almost as soon as they are born. They get applause. They are admired and endear all and sundry. They are the target of many expectations. They are child prodigies, children of genius. Mathematicians, astronomers, musicians, programmers and poets. What happens to these children when they grow up? What becomes of a child prodigy then? Do they live up to expectations? What is the price paid for the early head start? And I want to tell our TV viewers that our next guest is unique in that he is only two and a half years old. He is Mark Vishnya of Yekaterinburg. Let's multiply 23 by 23. 520? 529. And 18 by 18? What? 324. Once again? 324. Once Mark was given a sophisticated calculator as a birthday present. At first he treated it as a plaything. Once when he was playing with a calculator he nudged me and said, Look here, Dad. It says 251,001. When I saw that he knew how to calculate the square root without pressing the keys, he could see the numbers which were in the squares, and he put down the right numbers for me. The nation was stunned when a little boy performing extremely demanding mathematical computations appeared in a TV show featuring gifted people. He multiplied two-digit numbers and calculated square roots. It left a deep impression on the audience. Let's go and play. This is Mark's room. This is where his bed once was. When we send our children to bed, we usually give them something that helps them fall asleep. Some toys, perhaps, the usual stuff. But Mark would ask us to give him the calculator and the pen, and he would write something on the wall. Fasten your seatbelt. Your brother is too brisk today, you know. He's a perfectly normal child. He is only a child as far as we are concerned. It's not our aim to make another genius out of him. This doesn't interest me at all. Let him be happy. That's what I want most of all. Mark does not care about either his ABC books or music. All he wants to do is mathematics. But occasionally he does try to create melodies of his own. Sergei Savalyev says the uneven development of different sectors of the brain is responsible for the emergence of early genius. As a rule, it's not a sign of genius, but rather a sign that something is wrong with the child. This condition makes for a rapid decline in the ability to learn. True, at first the child learns much faster than his age mates, but just before puberty he or she turns into mediocrity, to say the least. Dr. Savalyev cites the unique mathematical talent of Mark Vishnya as confirmation of his theory. You will have to pay a heavy price afterwards because the child will demonstrate a lower level of adaptation with the result that he or she will show lower standards of behavior in public. The show that unfolds around children of that kind harms them psychologically because they think they are destined to do great things, but in fact calculators do such things faster. While he was still a toddler, Mark reached the finals of the TV talent competition. But organizers asked the parents of the calculator boy to withdraw him from the finals. His gift became too controversial. 
Any mother believes her child is the best one. Moreover, if you see that your child really has that talent, she wants to share her joy with other people. There is nothing wrong about it. I tried to do that several times, but then I told myself I'd never do it again. But now the four-year-old boy will take part in the show again. However, this time, Mark will not have to do sums in his head and announce the results in front of an audience. His mother, Natalia, is the star. She's attempting to win the title of Miss Yekaterinburg. The contest is for mothers, a regular kind of show, with one exception. The women have to appear on stage with their children. Natalia failed to win the title this time, and that means that Mark is still the star of the family. The parents of this little genius insist that they are doing nothing to stimulate his mathematical talents. Moreover, they're trying to fence the world of numbers away from him. And yet Mark's father decided to find out what specialists thought of his son's talents, and took him to Yekaterinburg's best-known experts on young mathematicians. Natalia Takmakova has dealt with gifted children for more than 30 years, She's in charge of a mathematical club for children. I notice that he tries to multiply the way the ancient Greeks did. Mark was never taught to do that. It came to him naturally. The teacher is convinced that unless his gift is consolidated through education, it will vanish into thin air in a couple of years. He attracts people now because he's still a little boy, but when he grows up he will find it very difficult to get the same results unless he is shown the way to do it properly. Mark's father, Denise, says he will not lose any sleep if his son's mathematical talents suddenly come to an end. People are saying, what on earth have you done to your child? Don't pressurize him so much. You mustn't do that to a child of only four years of age. It doesn't take a great pedagogue to understand that if a child doesn't want to do something, he won't do it. But four-year-old Mark thinks hopping along the keys of this giant keyboard that stands on the bank of the river, a kind of local landmark, is much more fun than trying to learn mathematics the way others do. I'm four years old. And I'm from the moon. Come on, Andre. Look for Venus. A bit to the right. Now lower, lower, stop. Andrei Chlopin, the young astronomer of Krasnodar, does not care much about the moon, because it's already been explored in detail. He and his father are after Venus. The sky is clear tonight, and it seems that the youngest Russian scientist's dream is about to come true. I 